science scores. You can see fifth grade, fifth grade this, the, the last year in 2013 did take a dip. Um, but we've essentially been really in that, in that B area for the most part, but we dropped uh, pretty heavy last year, fifth grade across the board. And although not so bad in 2013, our, our eighth grade science scores definitely have, have been some of our lower scores over the, over the past few years and even, even reflects that in the indicators. So these are some, this is some data that, that I've put in your board chair that you can, you know, pull over and take a little bit more time with, but I wanted to give you kind of a general overview of that. You know, our composite, for the most part, in terms of value added, kind of gives us our grades and where we are. Um, that seventh grade has really take, given us a dip over, over the past three years, so it's going to be certainly be a focus for us. Sixth grade has really pulled its weight. And uh, sometimes when sixth grade does such a nice job pulling its weight, that growth makes it difficult for the growth, growth ahead of it the next year. Um, and that's, that's partially why you see some of the, the way these scores go. But for the most part, if we can get those kids once they get that growth in the sixth grade year and take off and not just meet that, that, that proficient area but grow our accelerated and advanced kids a lot higher, I think we can do a better job in terms of our value added scores. Um, annual measurable object objectives measures the academic performance of specific groups of students such as racial and demographic groups. Each of these groups is compared against the collective performance of all students in Ohio. Key here is not only we're the only district in Columbiana County to get an A in this area, but you cannot get an A in this measure if one of your groups does not meet its goals. And you know, I, I guess if there's, if there's an area of focus, it wouldn't necessarily be this. I think that I would tell you we're, we're doing a nice job here. Um, you know, that A doesn't necessarily pop out on the paper as anything specific to you, but if you, once you start looking into what does that represent, you get a better picture that, you know, we're, we're really hitting all of our groups, and for us, two kids could be a subgroup, and then that subgroup could really be thrown completely off by one student. And so, you know, meeting the needs of some of those groups have, has, has been something that we've not done a poor job in. And, you, and if you look across this paper uh, that was put out, you can see that other districts are really struggling in that area. Um, we've done a nice job. Graduation rate. You know, this is, this is one of those areas that, you know, to, to get a B in it, you, you feel somewhat shameful in it, but know the politics around it. You know, the, the law changed. Option 23 students that are special needs students have the ability to go on and continue their education to age 23. Well, now those students now count against your graduation rate for a four- and five-year cohort. So you get into, you know, what's best for your kids. And the best thing for your kids isn't necessarily to worry about this graduation rate, it's to try to meet their needs. Unfortunately, there's a conflict there. We would have met the four-year graduation. We would have missed the five-year based on those students by a small half a percentage point, somewhere around there. I think I calculated it was like a 94 point something or other um, for the five-year. But again, some of those students are passing our courses and not passing the OGT, so they can't graduate. So we might have them another year on our rolls in terms of not necessarily attending class, but they might, they might be on our rolls to take those tests again, going through some, some um, tutoring, some, some programs potentially that will help them pass those tests. Now, we can't make those students in that fifth year come back and do that. We encourage them to do that because, one, it's good for them. They graduate, which we'll ultimately we'll want to see happen so that they go off and have the opportunities that all of us have had. But secondly, that the, those kids um, can, can really make a decision to, to just not come. And, and we can't bring them back and say, you have to do that. 
Um, those are some of the kids right now that we're probably having a, a tough time with. And I know Mr. Hostetler and I have had some serious conversation about it. I know he and I have talked about some of his own personal goals for, for this coming school year, and it's tied into graduation rate. Why? Because those, that's an area where both he and I feel very adamant that we want to make sure our kids are coming through and graduating. Now, we can't, we, 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 we can't get into that game of we want to have kids graduate that have opportunities because of their special education uh, needs. To, to force them to step away and graduate in four years, which would increase our graduation rate. You know, we're still going to do what's best for kids, and so long as the board understands that sometimes our, our graduation rate may look like a B, it's okay, I think, to get a B if we're doing what's right by our kids first. So, again, it's philosophical at some point in time. Board of Education may direct us to look differently, but at this point, you know, we're going to stick with what we think is the best need at this point for kids and if they want that option 23 to continue on to go to the career center or go to other outside programs we're going to continue to do that and we'll, we'll get dinged on it if we get dinged on it future report card things to, to look for k3 literacy improvement area and i know mrs sharsham with the third grade re reading guarantee is, is focused in on those areas um, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident in not only her ability, but her staff's ability to, to make sure kids are on target. Um, you know, I, I, I tell the, the high school principals and the middle school principals, the foundation of what we do comes from that elementary school. Um, if they're ready to go by the time they hit middle school, the middle school is able to take them and grow them from there. And the same thing happens at high school. The, high, the middle school has its job to do. And if all the parts are working together, I don't think we're going to have issues with high school kids getting what they, what they need to be successful. Um, so then you move into the next area, which is prepared for success. And if you look at this, um, this is a component that measures six areas that don't technically receive a grade. Um, but it, it will be reported on the report card as to how we're doing it. Part of those measures are college admission test, dual enrollment credits, industry credentials, um, honors diplomas awarded, advanced placement classes and courses, and really advanced placement, meaning they score three or better on the advanced placement test, and international baccalaureate program. You know, so, so the high school has their work cut out for them in, in thinking about what's coming in the near future. Um, this is what's going to happen here relatively soon. We're going to be looking at that and there, there are timelines on the report card for those to begin showing up. So again, you know they, this is going to happen. And I know Katie walked out. Katie's with the, with the journal, but this is going to happen. They're going to put these in there, not necessarily Katie, but they're going to compare us. Um, are they fair comparisons? And it just depends on, on what area you're in and what district you're in and what you're faced with and what different opportunities are available to your kids and not others. Um, you know, I think some of the programs that we have in place are really going to allow us to blossom with some of these things, but we're going to dive down deeper into the data and, and hopefully be able to get those value-added scores to reflect where we think we should be. Um, we certainly are not satisfied with, with a rating of C, and I don't think any of our staff will tell you they were with anywhere in any one of our categories, but we certainly know we knew from before we, we had areas of, that we could improve in, and now, you know, as the papers begin to put these out and, and compare us and contrast us with other districts, now the focus would be just that much greater that we can hone in on our improvement areas. So that's in a nutshell um, the new, new report card, and I know that uh, there's way, way more to this. Uh, we could probably, you can probably go to seminars across the state that spend hours diving into this data, and I know that value added is going to be something we're going to be uh, really focusing in on. Any, any questions? Some concerns? I know some of that data is there in board chair for you to pull up if, if, um, if you want to dive into a little bit more. I can 
I can certainly, Mr. Buzzard and I both can, can, Mr. Buzzard is our test coordinator and we can get you additional information and you know, we'll, we'll, we take all the help we can get, I think, right? Thank you. Thank you. Item number five is nutrition in support and I believe she said she was unable to be with us today. Item number six, principal's report. Under curriculum and professional development, um, I mentioned at the last board mm -hmm. meeting that I gave a survey in the spring as part of our race to the top requirements, but I collected data on professional development needs in the classroom. And we'll be continuing our curriculum mapping, uh, aligning assessments with, because of student growth measures and SLOs. Um, teachers having to um, implement those things to show student growth. We'll be focusing on that as well, including a makeover for our current standards-based report card to align more with the Common Core now that K-5 has implemented them. All professional development will be supported by Mahoney County ESC teacher leaders again this year. And um, Mr. Book already mentioned some of the value added. Some of the things that I had already indicated in here is in addition to analyzing value added data, the fourth and fifth grade staff, I printed out an educational practice reflective survey off the Tell for Kids portal where <clears throat> I really, I wanted the teachers to be really honest with themselves, so I've asked them to take it, but they don't have to share with me unless they want to. But it asks things like the time on task in your classroom, if your planning takes you all the way to the bell, um, you know, things like that that are Bottom line, they're getting to, are the teachers using best practice strategies in the classroom and exploring effective teaching strategies. They'll continue to create learning targets um, and setting individual student go goals. Like Mr. Mook mentioned, you can go into that value added data and through linkage actually look at each student that was linked to a teacher, the percentage of time they were linked to the teacher. And one of our goals are our focus will be on students with disabilities. We, we fell in that area. I'm not sure why, but one of the things that we already started to do with our response to intervention this year is Mrs. Vogelberger is going to take over our IAT process. We've met with each grade level because each grade level we felt looks different in the data they bring to the table about individual kids. And I know teachers are doing it, good teachers automatically do it, they don't always document it. So the key for us is for you to come to a meeting with a student that is struggling, we need decision making data. And really numbers don't lie, and graphs, and if you can get some baseline data, show us where the student is, where you need to take them, but the most important thing is what's happening in between there. What are you doing to intervene for them? And Like Mr. Mook said, when a grade level comes in high, like third grade, they did so high in reading, so high in math. When they come in high, and that fourth grade teacher has to take them even higher, that's more of a difficult task. And I know my fourth grade math teacher took this very personally, held herself accountable, was extremely, you know, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And within this value added things, you can click to the next page and see. We do focus on the middle. We do focus on the lower end, and we intervene like crazy. We forget about that enrichment piece for those kids who come in already knowing what they need to know, and we need to take them one step further. So we're going to start looking at things like that in fourth and fifth grade. Um, we're going to continue with Literacy Collaborative. Under Student Achievement, uh, kindergarten kids took the crawl. Mr. Mook mentioned the third grade reading guarantee, that Senate Bill 316, and right now, the county on Friday put out a recommendation to districts that did not purchase vendor assessments, which I did not except for math because we didn't have a lot of a progress monitoring tool for math. We did purchase Renaissance Learning Star Math this year. Um, so we are going to use the Ohio Diagnostic Assessment, the screening tool, and we're going to work out some details on, on getting all the kids. We have to get them all tested by September 30th. Mandy Moore and Karen Visengardi under Health and Wellness are entering Dixon in the Get Fit, Get, Get Active, Get Fit Challenge, and Mandy Moore is also working with the Columbiana County Cash Coalition on the Bonnie Hopple School Health Mini Grant. We're going to try to go for getting backpacks and 
food to send home with our free and reduced lunch kids for over the weekend when things that they can make in the microwave, things that they can make quick. I put some upcoming events there for you. I didn't want fifth grade to feel left out because they weren't over here um, at Southside Middle School, so I am going to have Officer Bowley come there and continue to do the D.A.R.E. program with them, so that will begin. Um, fall um, OAAs for third grade is October 8th, and with having K2 and 3-5, we'll be doing picture day two days this year instead of just one day, so that's there. Special thanks, um, Rob Miles. I, I know everybody remembers Julianne Miles, our guidance counselor that passed away. Her husband for the past, I don't know, maybe three to five years has made us a donation to Joshua Dixon for character education and uh, anti-bullying um, resources. So thank you to him. And I'd like to thank the Rotary. Um, they made a generous donation for me to purchase school supplies for some kids that needed it. And that's my report. <coughs> Southside Middle School Good News Report. Um, we're off to a very good start considering that we closed down two hallways and relocated to the high school. I'd like to just acknowledge what a great job all the classified has done. Um, the teachers, some teachers were re relocated to new rooms and they've done a great job, but um, a lot of the changes the classified uh, people really came through. Mr. Marino and his work crew doing all the moving of items revamping things, did a super job, had everything ready, and um, just like to acknowledge them first. Also, we've got, we have new bus entrances and exit routes. They've, they've gone off without any hitches. Um, new morning reporting and breakfast procedures. The, the cooks have done a great job of making sure that the middle school kids are able to get their breakfast and the high school kids are able to get their breakfast. Uh, the middle school students are going into the auditorium in the morning to try to keep a little separation between the two buildings. Um, we've been able to work that out with Mr. Hostetler's cooperation. Our lunch procedures, um, we're eating over here in the high school cafeteria. <coughs> Our schedules have worked out beautifully. The uh, cafeteria people have had food for all four. Um, I have a group of kids eat, then high school eats, and then I eat again. And. Um, no hitches there, everyone's been able to get their lunches. Uh, we have a new classroom layout with our sixth grade having the top corner floor, try to separate them. Uh, Mr. Once again, Mr. Marino had all those rooms ready. We moved the technology. We have a new computer lab up in that area. Uh, no hitches so far, great job there. Um, we have a new teacher workroom. Again, Mr. Marino and his crew had to run a lot of electricity and, and get a new workroom because the, at the closing of the building, um, the teachers did lose their workroom, and also with moving around some scheduling, um, you know, we're really going to work a lot with this sixth grade group that <clears throat> didn't do as well testing as we would have liked to have them uh, to have done, and uh, we've put in for them a, um, a nine-week character ed course where they're just when they're talking about going through middle school and, and uh, growing up and that type of thing. So. Um, we're going to try to work a little bit with their attitude um, throughout the year. Athletics, I always give you reports about fielding teams and, and our squads, um, our, you know, our, our participation. Our volleyball squads are full. We have we had a good turnout for volleyball, cheerleaders, full squad. Football program, we are light at seventh grade. I think we only have 11, 12 kids at the seventh grade level, uh, which unfortunately, uh, we're playing, we play our 8th grade game, and we've only been playing a quarter for the 8th grade, or for the 7th grade, because we just don't have that many kids to field a team and play a whole game. Um, and of course you know, you know, it takes 11 players to play football, and we have some kids that are more running backs that are playing line just so we can get a team. So, I, you know, I'm always disappointed whenever we can't field a, a full team, so we are a little short in 7th grade football. Uh, Mr. Mook did a great job talking about the uh, testing. Mrs. Sharshan stole a little bit of my thunder too, a couple of things she said, but just noting our testing. Um, in the achievement area, uh, Columbiana, Southside Middle School, um, you know, as far as achievement, we do a great job. We've been prepared uh, to do well on achievements every year. We've actually missed uh, having a perfect score on our achievement part by one student. One more student would have passed in fifth grade math, we'd have a perfect score, and 
you know, now's the time to, to, to make improvements for this year. But as Mr. Mook did point out, we have a couple scores that other schools would really like to have in some areas. But those scores are gone. We're looking for this year. So um, as far as achievement, um, our performance index is outstanding. Some of the work that we've done with our um, small groups of students are outstanding. <clears throat> Getting to the value added, um, there's a prediction piece that we have um, that, that's looking at our students and, and charting where they're going. In math for Southside Middle School, we have 63% of our students that are on target to pass the next test, just basically showing up for school. Uh, we have 23% that need some focus. We need to make sure that they're, on, they're um, in line, doing what they need to do, um, doing well on their tests. So you add that together that on this next batch of tests, our math students in the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, the, um, the state's predicting that we'll have an 86% passing grade, which is, which is where, we, we're, where we want to be. But we don't want to forget about the 14% that they say right now, unless we do strong intervention, will not pass. So this is the kind of data and information we're getting back. Um, it's just trends. It just sees where kids are going. So that's, our, that's the prediction in math. In reading, they're predicting that we have 71% of our students on target to pass, and 20% need some focus, but should pass. We're over 90. We're at 91% is what they're saying that the Southside Middle School should do in math, and we have a 9% um, that need intervention. And once again, we have small classes. You know, we, don't, we have less than 100. So when, you get, when you're talking 9% of 75, you're talking five or six kids. So. Um, you know, we're playing these numbers games here, but, but you know, we're doing a pretty good job of having these kids um, lined up to do well. You already know red is the bad color. Um, and we have areas identified in red that students that do not, dem that do not demonstrate a year's growth. Um, I don't know whether Mr. Mook mentioned it that, you know, it seems hard to understand, but a year's growth is a zero on that chart. The zero is Dave was Dave was here going into the seventh grade and he leaves the same place. I didn't change, I didn't go up or down, I grew exactly one year in one year's time. So um, that's also probably a C. We don't like C's. But you, just when you're reading those charts, if you look at that, a zero is is a perfect one year's growth of the students. Um, when you get down to less than a year's growth, that below the negative one, that's where you get to the reds. And um, seventh grade, we did not do well. Once again, I think it's been explained twice. It's more difficult to do well when the, the year before does so well because you know, if they go from here to here, they expect that to keep going. You know, so if you go to here and you level off, now you're looking, you're not, now you're looking bad. But that's the game. We play, that's what set the course, and I think both Mr. Mook and Kim both said that the challenge is to keep going what's been done. So we have red in seventh grade, math and language arts, and that's going to be a focus that we're, we're going to try to, to not have red this year, and our eighth grade science has red. Which it, we're it, uh, on our numbers in, in seventh grade, percentage wise, we have nothing in the, in the 80s in seventh grade, or in the 90s. In our percentage pass. Oh, okay. You know, so when you look at our in our indicators, we're, we're skyrocket, and, and that's what you know, Mr. Buzzard for some of these other districts would love to see the numbers of kids that are passing our tests that are doing well. But the problem is, is we we didn't stretch them beyond that year's growth because they grew so much the year before that you know man, we're, we're, that's where we're going to have to take the ball and run with it. And again. And the C isn't bad, but it, but that's not what the, that's not what the public looks at. And then just to find the Mr. Mook, the beautiful job leaning into my final uh, part. Um, <laughs> then we can break then, then we can break it down one more time to each individual teacher. We break the students down into five levels: from our lowest achieving, low middle, middle, high middle, and high, and you can see where teachers do well with certain types of kids. And if you want to you know, take a look at that, 
you can see that, you know, you're doing, and, and to be honest, a school like Columbia and some of our neighboring schools that have done really well in the past years, you know, you can sit down and probably, and probably take a guess the students that they do really well with, and that's our middle kids, because that's what most kids are in the middle, and we get them all, you know, we pass them. And some of the other schools like us are struggling, as Kim said, and I think as Mr. Mook said, we got to get these high kids a year's growth, because they're going to pass the test. They're going to pass the test, but are we are we taking them to where they need to be? And, and we, we did well with some of our with our groups for our, our lower achieving kids, but we definitely need to bring them up to speed. So that's a very each teacher gets their their own report on how they did with certain groups of kids, and um, you know it's, it's an eye it's an eye opening experience for them that um, you know out of these four quintiles. You know, these these three I did well. Low to middle I did well. Boy, I had two groups. You know, they passed the test, but they didn't they, they didn't grow. So it's a whole other it's a whole other area to uh, to work with. I didn't get it on here because I just got this this afternoon. But we um, Southside Middle School sixth grade math and eighth grade math got chosen for um, to do a field test for the park. This will be our last year of regular testing. And um, next year we go to a computerized test. So we had we had chosen to do a sixth grade field test for um, sixth grade math and eighth grade math. For the, it's called the park assessment, which will help us tremendously. It'll give our kids a chance to see what the new tests are going to look like, and it also gives our teachers a chance to see what they're up against. Um, I've already talked to Mrs. Misos and in our in our um, tech period. And um, part of her walking orders this year is to find out everything she can about park and prepare our kids as much for the for the for the uh, computerized test as possible. And she's already um, got back to me that she's done some research on that. So it'll be a challenge. Um, hopefully, that's you know we have a veteran staff, although we, we are getting younger. You know, hopefully this kind of thing invigor invigorates you. You know, the fact that yeah, I, I had this down, how to be successful. With this, you know, with this challenge, now we have a whole new challenge. You know, can you teach an old dog new tricks? Basically, uh, we're going to support the old dogs as much as we can, so, so, yeah, so they do well. So, I'm, you know, sometimes I'm confident, sometimes I'm not. I'm very confident about this year. I know that where our pockets, uh, our need is. Mr. Mook already said it. We have a great sixth grade teaching staff. They always do very well. You know, we have a group coming into them that, that, that we were a little disappointed with their results. So I, I'm pretty positive that we'll. Uh, and I mean, if, we want, if that group didn't do well this year, if the scores were here, it's a lot easier to get growth. So that's the game that we're all going to win two or three years. Everyone's going to see, wow, you did really well. Well, it's because the year before we didn't. So, but I think everybody wants to be up here the whole time. Didn't mean to, didn't mean to talk that much, but <laughs> this is this is going to be this will be interesting how we how we. Uh, Address this and meet the challenge. What's this? Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. High school report. <laughs> uh, under uh, academics and curriculum, uh, we got some exciting things going on. Um, this will be our first year we're piloting a totally online class in personal finance. Uh, it's very exciting for us. Uh, our goal is to, uh, for every uh, Columbia High School graduate to graduate taking an online class because we see that as, you know, using that in the future and in the, in the, when they go to college and, and future trainings on online and things like that. So I, I want to thank Mr. Martin and Mrs. Misos. Uh, they've been tremendous help with, with that. Uh, as Mr. Mook pointed out, we have several goals at the high school um, pointing to the new report cards. Um, to increase our graduation rate, which is right now is 90.3, and to improve our performance at NEX, although it was one of the highest in the area, is 103.5. Uh, that is one of our goals to get to that 110 mark. Uh, the, I guess the overall arching theme would be to, en to enhance our uh, advanced and accelerated students while providing support for our at-risk students. So a couple things that we're putting in place. Uh, we uh, expanded the schedule this year. 
Uh, that will give us a chance for uh, intervention classes and credit recovery. Our intervention classes this year include uh, OGT, uh, prep, math, and English uh, intervention, and that's for uh, at-risk students and students with uh, disabilities. Uh, we're also looking at enhancement uh, of our AP program. Uh, this year we had a, a nice increase in the number of students taking AP courses. We want to continue that trend. We've been working with uh, uh, an ODE rep. Uh, we received a $10,000 grant to, to expand our AP programs. Um, Mr. Martin is in the process of working with our AP teachers to des, uh, design an AP page on the ClipperNet. And uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to meet with the AP committee. We'll be looking at drafting a mission statement and comprehensive policies towards the ex expansion of our AP program. Um, under student events, soon, senior night will be this uh, Friday night. Um, and we are auditioning for our new fall play. This will be the first time that we have a fall play. It's Arsenic and Old Lace. Uh, and we're looking for a November showtime. So and Mrs. Ferguson extended an invitation, and I'll be sure to uh, include more information about that coming down the line. Uh, under guidance, uh, Mrs. Waller is going to speak to you tonight. A couple updates going on. Um, we are through with the scheduling process, I think. All the scheduling changes the first couple weeks, so that's a good feeling. I hope we're done with that. Um, senior credit checks and class visits I actually did today and just going over transcripts with them, going over the college application process. We have um, free online ACT prep through Youngstown State University and it's, this is maybe the second or third year but we had a ton take advantage of that this year so I'm excited about that. Um, October 2nd we're planning to take all the seniors to Kent State for a college fair possibly juniors or some juniors. Um, so that'll be some good exposure for them to meet with some representatives. We have um, college application day plan for November 15th. This is, there's about 20 different colleges that waive their application fee if students apply on that day. So we bring all, them, all the seniors that want to apply to those 20 schools down to the computer lab and they'll uh, do the online applications there. Uh, we have about 20 college reps scheduled some career and technical schools, I think every branch of the military, so they'll be coming in. We have a whole calendar and we do announcements, reminders, just trying to get them engaged in that process early to start planning for college now. Um, some of them wait a little bit later in the year and it gets a little stressful for them, so just trying to encourage them to do two college applications by Thanksgiving break. That's my goal for them. Um, we have OGTs coming up for fall OGTs, juniors and seniors that either had not passed or are new to Ohio, so they have to take all five parts. We have about 25 students we're testing. They're not taking every part. Some of them are just taking one or two. So I'll be uh, proctoring those tests. We also are offering the PSAT, which is the preliminary SAT. It's like a practice SAT to all 10th graders under a grant. Um, so that, along with giving them exposure to that type of test and sort of gauging them academically. There's a big career and college piece that comes with that with their results. So once we get their results in, we can get them logged into to some things on College Board. And, and so that's 10th grade. So I think that'll help with the college and career piece too. Um, I'll be working on freshman through junior class visits and targeting different things that are pertinent to them. Uh, there's a couple new groups that we're starting up. I have an intern from Kent State University, guidance counseling intern. Uh, we're looking at doing um, we had quite a few new students to the district, like open enrolled or just moved into the district. So we were actually able to form, since they had kind of had like a common study hall or time where we could meet with them, um, to sort of do a, a group for them, like a you know, new to the school kind of thing, introductory, getting them acclimated, making sure that transition's going well. So I think that'll be good. And then also another group um, of students um, sort of at risk academically, maybe some other social behavioral things, so trying to work with them a little bit in a small group. Um, peer tutoring, um, 
I, I think I might have mentioned it in a meeting past, but we do have a peer tutoring program, and I've, I've talked to some parents about it, like freshman orientation, new student orientation. We had a good response so far this year of students signing up to be tutors. Um, not everybody signed up to want a tutor quite yet, but I think that'll come along as interims and things come out and parents, but we do have a strong base of students willing to tutor, um, so that'll be a good program this year, I think. Um, and then lastly, we had eight students that uh, were nominated, selected, did an application and an essay and chosen to do. Um, the Akron Children's Hospital has a teen mentor volunteer program. So they'll go to monthly meetings where they'll be mentored, um, but they also will do volunteer work for Akron Children's Hospital. So hopefully some exposure for students interested in working with children, interested in medical fields. And so that's what's on the horizon and guidance. Thank you. Uh, under students and commu community, uh, Mrs. Prindle's uh, multiple handicaps uh, class re uh, took a recent trip to the street fair, so she had, had a great time. Uh, NHS is selling Bali for the Cure t-shirts, so if you need your Bali for the Cure shirt, you can pick that up with an NHS member. Uh, I want to say thank you to our student volunteers who helped uh, this recent Sunday with our alumni dinner. They did a great job, got good reports. Under athletics, uh, boys soccer is off to a very good start. They are currently 3-2-1 and one overall, three uh, undefeated in ITCL, 3-0-1. Girls soccer is undefeated. They are 4-0 right now, 2-0 in, in the league. Girls golf is unbelievable. They are currently undefeated, 10-0. Um, boys golf is 8-3, very good record. Volleyball is currently 5-1 with a 3-0 ITCL record. <coughs> Football is 0-2, but we had that as two one-point losses, so a couple heartbreakers for our football team. Cox Country is right now competing out back, they're hosting a meet tonight with 15 teams, and the cheerleaders are uh, doing a good job prepping for Friday's uh, first pep rally. Uh, upcoming events, of course, senior night will be this Friday, school pitchers on the 17th, and then homecoming on uh, homecoming night will be the 4th, and the dance will be the 5th. Thank you very much. Okay, item number 7 is public input. We don't have anything on that. I think we're going to forego item number eight. Item number nine. Um, I'd like to do the consent agenda for items nine through thirty-four. I'll second. Question. Call the roll. Herder. Yes. Frontman. Yes. Whitmer. Yes. Guy. Yes. <coughs> Motion passes. Item number 35 is the President's Report. On that note, um, since we can set the agenda, I'd like to welcome Ms. Mrs. Brooke Hitchcock to the district as an LPN. She's one of our new hires and, um, that we hired tonight. And also all the other new um, employees that aren't here, we welcome them all to the district. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was um, there's lots of excitement in the fall activities, and I know I have kids in the district, and you know we're all running different ways, but uh, we seem to be all kicked off good, and our teachers have all got the students in the classrooms, and everything seems to be working very well. And um, with regards to the report cards, I'd like to say, is with all things, we have challenges with comes with new things, and but I'm confident in our <coughs> administrators, our teachers, that we will meet them. So thank you. Item number 36, me again, OSBA Legislative Liaison Report. Um, with the new report cards, the one thing I noticed when I was reading my report was that less charter schools reached the high marks. 319 of traditional districts reached A's compared to the 18 charter schools in Ohio. So I thought that was an interesting fact. And um, the other thing was budget co cuts across the state um, and the country, actually nationwide, are forcing nearly 3,000 Ohio kids from the Head Start program. And um, nationwide, more than 57,000 kids are losing access to that program. So the cuts are reducing employees, and unfortunately, as we all know, they lose their jobs also. 
Um, Mr. Hotseller had mentioned the um, financial literacy program, which I was, was exciting because Ohio is above average in leading the financial li literacy education program across the country. So, and I do believe that's in part to us requiring that with our um, instruction for K through 12. That's my report. And item number 38 is Mark, and he's not here. So, item number 39, date of the next board meeting is Tuesday, October 8, 2013, <coughs> at 6:30 p.m. in the High School Media Center. And item 40. Let's make a motion to consider executive session for the compensation of employee to review negotiations and for matters required to keep to be kept confidential by federal law rules or state statutes as defined by FORC 121.22. Second. Discussion? Call the roll. Ron Cohen? Yes. Guy? Yes. Turtle? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Motion passes. We are in executive session.